Adam, I want to start with you. What was your initial reaction to Zach Goh's testimony? It seemed like not a good day for Twitter. Yeah, he claimed that the company's security was lacking. I think the company, we know the company has disputed that in detail, and, and others have pointed out it was his responsibility to strengthen security in this role. This question of whether the company's security is sufficient, I think, will ultimately be one for the Federal Trade Commission to determine. I will say that when I worked within tech companies, you know, no company likes, ha likes having their internal disputes and challenges aired publicly. That may be especially true here, given that there were clearly conflicts between Peter Zacco and Parag uh, Agrawal. But ideally, when the dust settles, you know, companies can often learn from criticism and improve from it. I think with, with security, the, it's a hard topic because despite the kind of the political table pounding, the reality is nuanced. Twitter has had a few uh, high profile hacks, but they're, they're not a regular occurrence. And I think in the realm of security, you know, every day without a hack, of which Twitter has had many, is a success. Of course, there's no prize for a day without without breaches. Could could most companies, including Twitter, do more to improve security? Almost certainly. Does Twitter do security better than most companies? Almost certainly. Alex, what were your big takeaways about you know sort of the big revelations here, and uh, you know what this might actually mean for its dispute with Elon Musk, given that. It didn't seem like bots and spam, which is his, his main point of contention, really came up. Yeah, so I'll start with the takeaways that are not Musk related. Uh, related to what Adam was saying, there was a lot of, a lot of political table pounding and a lot of calls for uh, increased enforcement, increased regulation. And Emily, there are some kind of surprising allies in those calls. You saw folks like uh, Lindsey Graham, the Republican from South Carolina, aligning with Elizabeth Warren, uh, the Democrat from Massachusetts, saying we're working on something to um, uh, better regulate tech companies. You heard Amy Klobuchar and Chuck Grassley also lean into this idea and Senator Blumenthal actually suggests that maybe we need a new regulatory agency to regulate big tech. All of that um, is very much in the realm of D.C. and this ongoing conversation of the role of big tech and uh, where regulation comes in. The Elon Musk part um, kind of plays into a little bit of that, what we heard from Zatko in terms of um, what he described as almost a cultural um, kind of aspect of the company, uh, where he said the company kind of fights fires, moves from fire to fire, um, was the quote, uh, makes short term changes, isn't thinking long-term about security. Uh, they're only really thinking long-term about growing revenue and users. So um, that point right there, Emily, even though it's not specifically um, one of the three reasons why Elon has given to back out of the deal, um, I think that would be the one that Musk might be most interested in. Uh, he has kind of leaned on this idea that the board um, and the executives have misrepresented data. So while we didn't hear a lot about bots or spam accounts, uh, that cultural element might be the one that we see pulled into the argument that Musk is poised to take hmm. into court in October. Interesting. Adam, what do you make of that? Our Bloomberg intelligence analysts have concluded they don't think this testimony will have a material adverse impact on Twitter's attempt to hold Musk to this deal. They still think there's a, a 70, uh, 70 percent chance this deal goes through, um, you know, what do you think about what Zatko said that could potentially rise to the level of impacting whether or not this deal happens at all? Well, I'm not a stock analyst. I do agree. One of the things that was surprising to me was the extent to which the bots question really didn't come up today. And that was surprising to me because in the past, one of the things we have seen a lot of is particularly Republicans in Congress fairly eager to uh, talk about Twitter in a way that, you know, is, is very much in line with Musk's goals. And so that was a bit of a surprise for me. But I don't think that, uh, I, I, you know, I think that that is really a separate process, right? And what was unique to me about this was interesting, because I compared this a lot to uh, the Francis Haugen testimony last year around Facebook, which I think led policymakers to in introduce a number of bills. There were eight different bills introduced last year as a result of the Haugen testimony, mostly dealing with social media. But today's testimony was really uniquely about Twitter and its security practices. I think that question is most likely to be looked at in great detail by the Federal Trade Commission. And then the question of bots, really, which didn't come up today, is, as we know, a, a central question of the litigation that, that the companies engaged with Musk. So I don't think that there wasn't anything necessarily new today that came out of the hearing that I think changes the direction 
of that litigation. Well, and comparing it to Francis Haugen's testimony, um, you know, it, that was really impactful, it seemed to have a, a significantly adverse effect on uh, Facebook, which, you know, has since changed its name uh, and it has, has been, you know, still working on um, trying to clean up its reputation in, in part in response to that and, of course, other things. Um, you know, uh, one more question about the Elon Musk part of this, um, Alex. Twitter uh, has responded saying they're, they stand ready and willing to complete the merger with Elon Musk. They say 98.6% of shareholders today approved uh, Elon Musk doing this deal. That was expected. But, you know, Twitter's still, Twitter still saying, we're going to make this happen whether you like it or not. Yeah, it's a it's a funny situation, Emily. Right, um, where the owner could be um, a, a man who has now um, had uh, three ticks in the "I don't want to do this deal" bucket. Um, I, I think that that shareholder uh, approval that you saw today is significant. Um, it was expected, but it is significant um, that at least that very large majority thinks that this is the best uh, kind of path forward for shareholder value for this company. Um, but certainly, Emily, we'll, we'll be following the play-by-play -play, uh, going into October. We've already seen a little bit of drama. The judge coming to Musk saying you need to give up your text messages. Uh, the judge going to Twitter saying you need to reveal more data. So there's certainly going to be um, uh, more fencing back and forth as we go into the next couple of months here. Um, but this at least is kind of another um, checkbox for this deal to continue uh, to that litigious end that we're set on right now. Now, Adam, one of the interesting things that Zatko said is that Twitter is more concerned about foreign regulators than U.S. regulators. What did you make of that? And, it, and, and if it'll goad uh, potentially the FTC into taking more aggressive action or other regulators? Yeah, as you, as you pointed out, the FTC has an existing consent decree uh, that's 11 years old with Twitter. It will surely take a close look at whether um, it is living under the terms of that. But I don't think there's any doubt. One of the things that was a t big topic of conversation today was whether the federal government has enough resources. You saw Lindsey Graham talking about let's create a new agency. But the reality is that we're not funding the agencies we have. The FTC, last year there was a proposal, for example, by the Biden administration to create a whole new bureau at the FTC focusing on privacy and data security. And that's a very good idea. But unfortunately, Republicans killed that proposal, right? That was going to be a billion dollars more funding, including some of the same Republicans who were complaining today about the FTC not doing uh, enough. So there's a lot more policymakers can do. They can also pass a consumer privacy bill. They've been stalling on that. And the FTC has been looking at this question of issuing more comprehensive data security rules for all companies to follow. They've been reluctant to do that. They, they prefer instead to reach settlements with individual companies. But the problem is that it doesn't set clear security uh, rules for other companies to follow. They've just recently kicked off a rulemaking, and I think there's a good case to be made that that rulemaking should focus as much on data security uh, as on privacy. Uh, Alex, what's next? Uh, we're now about a month away from the day that this trial is supposed to start. Elon Musk v. Twitter. Yeah. We are. Um, what's next is, is going to be continuing this kind of evidentiary process for them uh, against this backdrop of what's going on in D.C., Emily. Um, you know, there's a Homeland Security hearing tomorrow where one of Twitter's executives will be there alongside Meta, YouTube and TikTok execs as well. So I think um, for Twitter, they'll have these kind of um, dueling, perhaps distractions, um, uh, big ones at that for whether or not this deal gets done with Musk. Uh, we saw that Musk was uh, watching today. He was tweeting perhaps a little bit cheekily, um, but we do know that with Elon Musk, sometimes the jokes do turn serious. Um, so I'm sure that there will be continue to be um, kind of bobs and weaves on that side of the deal, as well in as in D.C. in terms of uh, if there is any kind of action here. Um, to Adam's point, after Francis Haugen, the Facebook whistleblower, did, um, you know, go down to Washington, there were a lot of bills proposed. There hasn't been a ton of significant changes yet. So if there is any moves on the kind of political worry side on data privacy. Um, if history is any guide, those might be a little bit slower than what we might see on the, than the, uh, the deal that is expected to go to court in October.